This is Change Laps and for Slothbox, sponsored by the Excelsior Sporting Club. And I'm joined today with Cynthia Conte. Cynthia, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. It's been a crazy 24 to 48 hours in the sport. Anthony Joshua was due to face Dillian White. However, he has failed a drugs test yet again for the third time of his career. Um, now they've had to draft in Robert Hellenus as the last minute replacement on four days notice. Hellenus himself only fought a few days ago. He fought out in Sweden and over the weekend, getting a third round knockout against a 41 year old who is 6 0, um, six knockouts. But let's be real, a novice, nobody of Anthony Joshua's stature for sure. Uh, first of all, talk about Dillian White. What did you make of the fact he's failed yet again? It's a complete joke. I, 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 I don't even know how to go about this because, you know, when it comes to drugs or PEDS, it's, it's a no go in my book. And it's a no go in a lot of people's books, especially in boxing. Like I said, I've always said, I go, you can go do PEDS wherever if you do a team sport, because it's a team, but you're one-on-one -on -one in a ring with someone else and someone can potentially die and it's not fair. Uh, but for, you know, it's, it's, it's the saga with Dillian, Dillian White with his PEDS. It's like, the last time he did, and then he was the WBC, uh, the, when he was WBC interim, he was put, I think, on two-year hiatus, and then he fought it, and then before that, he got busted again. It's like, either you really have no idea what you're eating, I mean, shame on you once, shame on you twice, shame on you four times, and from what I, I heard, and I don't even know if this is true, I guess when he was testing, it, he kept failing multiple times, so... I'm a little confused of why Anthony Joshua's team probably didn't know because Bada usually informs them immediately because I guess, I, and I don't know this, I don't know if Joshua's team knew at the same time as Matchroom, but it's just like, damn, again, Eddie, like, you, it's, 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 it's one after another, you can only do so much, but I don't, I don't know where Dillian White's going to go after this. I think it's just a damn shame. I He needs to fire his team. He needs to fire. He, he needs to just, just figure out what he's eating and drinking and testing every, even the water that he drinks. I'm not even kidding. I, I don't know because something is always popping up. I, was it revealed of what was the adverse finding in his um, testing? Do they release that? Not yet, I don't believe. Yeah, because if it's like a straight head and not something that you find in an energy drink, I'm just saying, I'm just saying over here. But I think it's just it's it's just absolutely ridiculous. I believe I don't remember. I read a heavyweight. He said, you know, this is just unfair. You know, all the fighters that do clean boxing and that that are clean, it's just unfair to them because they don't get these these chances and Dillian White this is a rematch this is a big rematch and I I personally I think that Dillian White did take the steps this time to make sure okay what's in this I just want to make sure but I don't know I I just don't know like you know those supplements that you buy at like a GNC or a health store those things have things in there that are cut with something that obviously makes your testosterone higher or you get leaner or you know just Something is in something that it's just a damn shame, but I don't care. I don't like cheaters. It, 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 it's no matter how it got in your system, it's, it's, a, it's your fault. doesn't matter. You can blame everyone, but you got to look at yourself and say, I should have just tested every single thing that came in my mouth. But yeah, it's too bad. Sorry, Dillian White. You lost on a massive payday. You lost out on a big rematch. I know Anthony Joshua needs to be in the ring for activation uh, to be active uh, to uh, for um, what is that word? Uh, activity. Activity. There you go. I'm on activation. I was close. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and it's just sad because you, we saw it with Jarrell Miller. It, it's just like I feel bad for Joshua and I know he needs some fights. I mean, I know he needs some tune up fights before he can step in with possibly a Wilder or a Fury or somebody of that stature. Uh, but I know that, you know, I know it's the UK that it's like, damn, again, and I know people bought tickets specifically for that fight. Luckily, DAZN is not making that a pay-per-view, but I feel bad for the people who are traveling for this fight and they're getting Hellenius. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a good opponent. And luckily, he just fought on Saturday, so he's still in shape. He didn't even get hurt. He didn't do anything, but still... I don't know. We're going to, we're going to have to see how Anthony Joshua looks because the way I, I really believe when he last fought uh, Ruiz, 
when he lost, you know, every, it took something out of his soul. And I'm hoping, and I'm praying that maybe he found that, that whatever it was uh, with Derek, with Derek uh, James, and then just found himself again. And, you know, really starting to fall in love with boxing again and learning the tools and the skills and just going, you know, the basics. So I, I'm excited to see Anthony Joshua, regardless of who it is. I didn't want to see Andy Ruiz because as much as Andy Ruiz has not been active, I would still think Ruiz would outbox, you know, as fast as he is. Uh, I know there was Gerald Washington that was on the short list, um, a couple other people, uh, but Hellenius, I guess, just makes the easiest. It's, he's already he's already in shape. He he just fought. Nothing happened. But uh, yeah, so yeah, that's my take on it. Shame on you, Dillian White. Shame on you for failing. I don't know how many times, but it, this boxing has got to step in. the The boxing gods, promoters. This is this is. You guys all talk about that you want clean boxing, but yet you guys allow this and maybe try to. Like, I'm going to just, we're going to get into it, but like, even for the Connor Ben, they didn't postpone that fight because all the teams said, okay, well, let's just kind of figure it out. But with the Joshua Dillian White, they immediately canceled it. So you have to be fair on both playing fields. If you're going to do one for one, you got to do it for the other. There's like, there's no, oh, well, maybe this happened. No, a cheat is a cheat. It's in their system. It's in their system. Okay. That is my, thank you for my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds you mentioned like uh, Nevada should notify the teams. And as you mentioned, the Connor Ben fight and the Chris Eubank Jr. fight, they seem to be aware of it and they agreed, to, well, we'll sweep it under the carpet. We'll still fight it out until it came out to the public and there's knowledge out there. With this fight, it seemed to, Dillian White came out a few hours later and said, I was not aware of this. In terms of the notification, should it have gone to the fighters first before the public? Or I know, for example, Buddy McGirt training Dillian White at the moment, I'd actually text Buddy as soon as the news came out and said, do you want to make comment on record? The news is crazy. And he replied to him, what news? He had apparently no idea. So, you know, where's this, you know, fairness to the fighters, for example? You know, maybe Anthony Joshua's team did know about it, but it seems Dillian's didn't. I it, That's that's what's so weird to me is because when, I mean, uh, based on what Dillian White said is that he was the one pushing always for VADA. And so when someone always pushes, then... I, in, you know, in our mind, we think that they're clean because they are the ones pushing and wanting the testing. But for him to not know about his own test and Matchroom knew about it, you, I would, I would think immediately Vada has everyone on a CC, Matchroom, Eddie, Frank, uh, Dazon, uh, Buddy, and Dillian White. That like even a BCC, I doesn't matter because they're the ones that are being tested. It shouldn't. I I don't believe. And I like I said, I don't know how Vada does it. I will I will probably follow up and ask. Who do you guys email to? Is it strictly the promoter of the fight of the fight and of the fighters, or is it do, who gets that who gets that email? Um, unless maybe Dillian White is playing dumb. I, I really don't know. I mean, we never know because. Boxing is so shady. <laughs> we know this. It's all about politics and it's all about money. Uh, but I think with the Eubank, personally, we know that was a massive fight. It still is a massive fight. It's, it was pay-per-view. And for Eubank to say, yeah, I'm going to take it regardless. I'm going to whatever, even though you're juiced up. Uh, I, I it, For that, I know it was about money and it was so much about grudge and about just ego but ego has to be stepped aside because your life is on the line because hypothetically, let's just say Connor allegedly did, did take this stuff. I don't even know what it is. I always say, look, if Eubank was looking to have a baby, then, you know, I mean, I'm just curious, but it's even to this day that dossier has never been made public. If that thing is made public, then we should not as media and as boxing fans, we should not be, willing to say, okay, we'll take you back into boxing because you tested positive and we really don't know why because you said the WBC threw you under the bus and then you don't know how this got in there. At least with Canelo, he provided everything for for the food he ate in Mexico, the Canelo meat or the, the chicken, whatever he ate, he provided receipts. Whether or not it was true or not, I don't know, but he went above and beyond to prove. And he still got the six-month suspension. And he'll, forever in the books, it will always say Canelo, uh, Canelo, excuse me, Canelo um, had 
adverse findings and he it's he's busted so i think that you know the way that all these peds are coming out it's either just own up to it because sadly enough we are all forgiving it's like you owned up to it shame on you okay take the penalty do better and then come back uh without anything in your system and see really how good you are in terms of the new opponent and helena it's as you mentioned it's not ideal but it's an okay opponent to step in at four days notice you know they're trying to say you know he's got the height like wilder trying to prepare for the wilder fight which may take place at the end of the year early next year but there's also comparisons wilder blew out helena's very early into the fight if aj doesn't do that as quick as wilder are they looking at saying, well, he's not as good as Wilder? Is this a lose-lose situation for Anthony Joshua, regardless of the result? No, I personally, I mean, I, I saw that people just say, just don't even have him fight. But he's been out of the ring. He has got to be active. We saw it with Spence early on. Uh, I mean, and that was an incredible fight. And we all saw it. Spence even said, you know, he was a little rusty at the beginning because he, he wasn't active. But it he still gave the best he could. Terrence was just levels ahead but like i said uh, they're both still elite fighters regardless how spence lost he just he just lost to the better fighter now with anthony joshua he needs to be active because he doesn't know so wilder and joshua are very different fighters deontay has that one hitter quitter so when he lands on it lights are out Anthony Joshua doesn't have that one hitter quitter. He's going to have to break him down, box him, and hopefully land. So I think in this case, uh, it it's not a lose-lose, but Joshua needs this. He needs it more than we need this. He needs to see his skills. Is he learning anything in uh, t- uh, James's camp in, with Derek James? Is has he is he falling back onto his old habits with his old trainer? He needs to get that shake off that ring rust, whether it's Lanes or not. And it's boxing; you never know what can happen. The way it happened with Andy Ruiz took a last minute opponent. Everyone thought, "Oh, this little this little fat boy." And I know Ruiz; he's fast. So I was like, "Well, this guy's game." <clears throat> but Helenius. No, I just think it's it's a tune-up fight, but he needs this. And I sad to say you don't want to rid the boxing fans because who would hypothetically, if the if the fight was pulled, who would have been the main event? Who I don't even know who the co-main event was, or yeah, who was the co-main event on this card? Chisora Washington, maybe. Chisora. Oh yeah, and people were talking about Chisora. Like, not against Joshua. Like Bless you, bless you, Delboy. But no, I, it's Joshua. Just uh, yeah, I think there's a reason why they chose Hellenius. Besides, he's been active. He needs kind of like a an easier fight as opposed to someone that's just going to bombard him and and just bum rush him. Uh, and uh, and Anthony Joshua won't be able to you know set and do his thing. But hey, styles make fights. You never know. Anything can happen. We shall see. You mentioned Anthony Joshua needs to fight. He needs to stay active. How much does Derek James need this fight and the win after the Errol Spence loss? You know, based on what Derek James said in his post-fight interview uh, with Spence, he said this is going to hurt. It's going to the, the the fight with Spence is going to really hurt because we saw you know this was that that was a fight that was just building for five years and they gave their all. Uh, but for Derek, you know, he's a professional. He was a professional fighter, so he understands. It's like to clean the uh, clean the straight, uh, uh, wipe this wipe the slate clean, and just uh, Joshua is a different fighter. This is a different game. You know, it's not the same course that Spence and uh, uh, Crawford have been on, where it's like this this mega mega fight. Joshua is still a star, regardless. But uh, I know all eyes are going to be on them, and I think Derek is not going to look at like, I have to win this because I have to make it for the loss. He compartmentalizes all of his fighters of like, this is their own. I need to get Joshua back in the winning lane. I got to get him like to the best of his abilities. And we're, and that's how they're going to figure out whether Anthony Joshua is learning or not, instead of, you know, how all these fighters always change trainers because they blame a trainer. So I, but I mean, based off of what I've heard from everyone in camp, from Spence, Ryan Garcia, uh, Frank Martin, um, even Derek James, they said Joshua's great. 
uh, they all help each other. And, uh, and, and Charlo, I always, I always forget Charlo. I'm sorry, Jamal. Um, but it, it's, you know, they all have that camaraderie. And I ask, I go, do you guys like help each other? He uh, help each other out. Like when you watch their fights, you need to work on the jab. They said, no, you know, we kind of bust each other's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended, but uh, they, you know, they all help each other out and they said, Anthony Joshua's looking good. And I think Joshua is just, he wants to show up and show out for the fans because he knows this is a big moment for him because he's stepping out with the new coach. Derek James is just, he's just doing his job. He doesn't care about the spotlight. And we've, I've known that for a long time. Uh, and especially he's, you know, I just don't want the media to bum rush Derek about the Spence fight when it's about Anthony Joshua. Like everyone should just focus on that. Everyone should focus on how have now, since you, the fight is what, what's today? They, they announced a different opponent, which happened for someone such a different style. Like how has Derek been training him? Has he been training Derek, uh, excuse me, uh, Joshua for different styles for this just in case? But I just, yeah, I don't, I, I know a lot of people are going to ask about this fence and think, is this a must win since of your loss? And I don't think media should really do that because Derek has been dragged in the media, which is awful. Just because he had a loss doesn't mean anything. You know, Canelo's trainer has had a loss and they don't drag him through the mud. But Derek James, whether or not you liked him or the way you liked the way he trained Spence, it's Spence is a world champion for a reason. He was he had three belts on the line. So, I mean, he, he had three belts of his own for a reason. He went to, he had, he went over to the UK and beat Cal Brook under Derek James. So people shouldn't, you know, shouldn't base off of, oh, well, Derek James needs this win. And then he's back at a uh, boxing trainer of the year that I think that's bull honky again. Thank you for my Ted talk. <laughs> I a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, perfect. All right, guys. Uh, well, I appreciate you, James, for inviting me onto Slothbox. Uh, but you guys can tune in. I don't know if you've seen my co-host, Giandra, and I. Giandra uh, LaBeouf and I, we have a podcast called The Best Women's Boxing Show, period. We are on YouTube, Spotify, everywhere you can hear us. You can watch us on YouTube. You can We do all of our socials on Twitter, all that. We have a we have right now, we have that thing about Keith Thurman fighting about Clarissa. We have... <laughs> Yeah. So yes, we have been getting a lot of great content, but we appreciate you. And uh, please follow us at best women's boxing show period. And I'm Cynthia Conte at the real fight girl on Instagram. And I appreciate you James for inviting us or inviting me on the show.